National Comrades and to our migranteng kababayan. Magandang gabi naman po sa inyo dyan sa Pilipinas. Mapagpalayang pagbati po para sa ating lahat. Welcome back again to the National Democratic Online School. We are now on our uh, third episode of our Engel Serie. If you have missed any of our episode, you can check it out on our uh, Facebook page, Anak Bayan Europa. Today, we will discuss Engels' anti-during philosophy on socialism. So get your, uh, your families and friends para sa isa na namang araw ng pagkatuto at diskurso. If you have questions, uh, just please drop it down on our chat box or comment box. And later after our discussion, we will have a question and answer portion in which um, Tito Jo could answer your question. So uh, without further ado, let's start our discussion. Please welcome ILTS Chief Emeritus Tito Jo Masison. Hi Tito, mapulang pagbati po para sa inyo. Um... Kang hello, revolutionary greetings to you and to all our <coughs> listeners. Ayan, Tito. Uh, huwag na tayong magpasikot-sikot, Tito. Let's start our discussion. Ano? So, uh, before, um, on our first question, ano, can you give us an overview of the part three of anti-during um, on socialism? In uh, part three of anti-during, Engels gives us the materialist history of the development of the ideas of socialism. This is the focus on chapter one, on the historical. In chapter two, on the theoretical. 
He presents the materialist conception of history and of the contradictions in capitalism. And in chapter three on production, chapter four on distribution, and chapter uh, five on the state, family, and education, he refutes Dürings fantasy conception and plans for a new socialitarian system detached from history and social reality. Tito, um, according to Engels, what did the philosophers of the French Enlightenment envision and how far did the French Revolutionary realize the rule of reason? Engels states, the French philosophers of the 18th century or the Enlightenment, the forerunners of the revolution, appealed to reason as the sole judge of all that is. Uh, a rational government, rational society were to be founded. Everything that ran counter to eternal reason was to be remorselessly done away with. We saw also that this eternal reason was in reality nothing but the idealized understanding of the 18th century citizen, just then evolving into the bourgeois. The French realized this rational society and government. Engel states further, but the new order of things, rational enough as compared with earlier conditions, turned out to be by no means absolutely rational. The state, based upon reason, completely collapsed. Rousseau's social contract had found its realization in the reign of terror from which the bourgeoisie, who had lost confidence in their own political capacity, had taken refuge first in the corruption of the directorate and finally under the wing of the Napoleonic despotism. The promised eternal peace was turned into an endless war of conquest. The society based upon reason had fared no better. It became the rule of bourgeois reason, bringing about the antagonism between rich and poor instead of dissolving into general prosperity. This had become intensified by the removal of the guild and other privileges which had to some extent bridged it over and by the removal of the charitable institutions of the church. The development of industry upon a capitalistic basis made poverty and misery of the working masses conditions of existence of society. The number of crimes increased from year to year. Tito, how does Engels treat the disappointing uh, events in the French Revolution and uh, how does he present the conditions of the French Revolution and the extent of capitalist development as limitations on the views of the utopian socialist, even if well-meaning? Uh, Engels observes, all that was one thing was the men to formulate this disappointment, and they came in with the turn of the century. In 1802, Saint-Simon's Geneva letters appeared. In 1808, appeared Fourier's first work. Although the groundwork of his theory uh, dated from 1799, on January 1, 1800, Robert Owen undertook the direction of uh, New Land, uh, Lanark. Um, uh, I uh, make these references. Uh, I will uh, explain these later. At this time, however, the capitalist mode of production and with it the antagonism between the bourgeoisie and the proletariat was still very incompletely developed. Modern industry, which had just arisen in England, was still unknown in France. But modern industry develops, on the one hand, the conflicts which make absolutely necessary a revolution in the mode of production. Conflicts not only between the classes begotten of it, but also between the very productive forces and the forms of exchange created by it. And on the other hand, it develops in these very gigantic productive forces, the means of ending these conflicts. If therefore about the year 1800, the conflicts arising from the new social order were only just beginning to take shape, this holds still more fully as to the needs of ending them. The propertyless masses of Paris during the reign of terror were able for a moment to gain the mastery, but in doing so, they only proved how impossible it was for their domination to last un under the conditions then obtaining. The proletariat, which then for the first time evolved itself from these propertyless masses 
as the nucleus of a new class, as yet quite incapable of independent political action, appeared as an oppressed, suffering state, to whom, in its capacity to help itself, help could at best be brought in from without or down from above. This historical situation also dominated the founders of socialism to the crude conditions of capitalist production and the crude class conditions corresponded crude theories. The solution of the social problems which is yet lay hidden in undeveloped economic conditions, the utopians attempted to evolve out of the human brain. Society presented nothing but wrongs. To remove this was the task of reason. It was necessary then to discover a new and more perfect system of social order and to impose this upon society from without by propaganda and wherever it was possible by the example of model experiments. These new social systems were foredoomed as utopian. The more completely they were worked out in detail, the more they could not avoid drifting off into pure fantasies. That's right, Tito. So uh, basically, what is Engels' comment on Durin's view of the utopian socialist? And what is Engels' evaluation of the utopian socialist, uh, St. Simon, Fourier, and uh, Owen? Uh, Engels dismisses as quibbling Durin's remarks of contempt for the fantasies of the utopian socialist and his failure to recognize their concern for the poor and oppressed, their honestly good intention and efforts. We can leave it to the literary small fry, uh, a la during, to solemnly quibble over these fantasies, which today only make us smile and to uh, crow over the superiority of their own bald reasoning as compared with such insanity. For ourselves, we delight in the stupendously grand thoughts and germs of thought that everywhere break out through their fantastic covering and to which these Philistines are blind. Engels evaluates each of the utopian socialists, Saint-Simon, Fourier, and Owen. He appreciates them for striving to make a better use of reason in the service of the oppressed and exploited working men and women, even as he noted the, the utopian character of their ideas of socialism. Engels gives to Saint-Simon credit for recognizing the French Revolution as a class war between nobility, bourgeoisie, and the non-possessors. Uh, once in the year 1802, a most pregnant discovery. In 1816, he declares that politics is the science of production and foretells the complete absorption of politics by economics. The knowledge that economic conditions are the basis of political institutions appears here only in embryo. Yet what is here already very plainly expressed is the idea of the future conversion of political rule over men into an administration of things and a direction of processes of production. That is to say, the abolition of the state about which recently there has been so much noise. If in San Simon, we find a comprehensive breadth of view by virtue of which almost all the ideas of later socialists that are not strictly economic are found in him. In, in embryo, we find in Fourier a criticism of the existing conditions of society, genuinely French and witty, but not upon that account any the less thorough. Fourier takes the bourgeoisie, their inspired prophets before the revolution, and their interested eulogist after it. At their own word, he lays bare remorselessly the material and moral misery of the bourgeois world. He confronts it with the philosopher's dazzling promises of a society in which reason alone should reign, of a civilization in which happiness should be universal, of an illimitable human perfectibility, and with the rose-colored phraseology of the bourgeois ideologies of this time. Still more masterly is his criticism of the bourgeois form of the relations between the sexes and the position of woman in bourgeois society. He was the first to declare that in any, in any given society, the degree of woman's emancipation is the natural measure of the general emancipation. But Fourier, 
is at his greatest in his conception of the history of society. He divides his, its whole course thus far into four stages of evolution, savagery, the patriarchate, barbarism, civilization. Fourier, as we see, uses the dialectic method in the same masterly way as his contemporary uh, Hegel. Using these same dialectics, he argues against the talk about illimitable human perfectibility, that every historical phase has its period of ascent and also its period of descent, and he applies this observation to the future of the whole human race. As Kant introduced into natural science the idea of the ultimate destruction of the earth, Fourier introduced into historical science that of the ultimate destruction of the human race. Robert Owen had adopted the teaching of the materialistic philosophers that man's character is the product, on the one hand, of heredity, on the other, of the environment of the individual during his lifetime, and especially during his period of development. In the Industrial Revolution, most of his class saw only chaos and confusion and the opportunity of fishing in these troubled waters and making large fortunes quickly. He saw in it the opportunity of putting to, into practice his favorite theory, and so bringing order out of chaos. He had already tried it with success as superintendent of more than 500 men in a Manchester factory. From 1800 to 1829, uh, he directed the great cotton mill at New Lanark in Scotland as managing partner along the same lines, but with greater freedom of action and with the success that made him a European reputation. His advance in the direction of communism was the turning point in Owen's life. As long as he was simply a philanthropist, he was rewarded with nothing but wealth, applause, honor, and glory. He was the most popular man in Europe. Not only men of his own class, but statesmen and princes listened to him approvingly. But when he came out with his communist theories, it was quite another thing. Three great obstacles seemed to him, especially uh, to block the path to social reform, private property, religion, the present form of marriage. He knew what confronted him if he attacked these. Outlawry, excommunication from official society, the loss of his whole social position. But nothing of this prevented him from attacking them without fear of consequences and what he had foreseen happened. Vanished from official society with a conspiracy of silence against him in the press, ruined by his unsuccessful communist experiments in America, in which he sacrificed all his fortune, he turned directly to the working class and continued working in their midst for 30 years. Every social movement, every real advance in England on behalf of the workers links itself on to the name of Robert Owen. He forced through, in 1819, after five years fighting, the first law limiting the hours of labor for women and children in factories. He was president of the first Congress at which all the trade unions of England united in a single great trade association. The utopians we saw were utopians because they could be nothing else at a time when capitalist production was as yet so little developed. They necessarily had to construct the elements of a new society out of their own heads, because within the old society, the elements of the new were not as yet generally apparent. For the basic plan of the new edifice, they could only appeal to reason, just because they could not as yet appeal to contemporary history. But when now, almost eight years after the time, Herr During steps on to the stage and puts forward his claim to an authoritative system of a new social order, not evolved out of the historically developed material at his disposal as its necessary result, but constructed in his sovereign head, in his mind, pregnant with ultimate truths. Tito Enduring's new socialitarian system the capitalist mode of production is uh, quite good you know, and can remain in existence. But the capitalist mode of distribution is of evil and must disappear. 
So why is this statement wrong and harmful according to Engels? A priori, during draws from his head, the, universe, the so-called universal principle of justice to draw up his so-called new socialitarian system. But in fact, he considers as good the capital mode of production, the capitalist mode of production, in which the workers are exploited, with the capitalists extracting the surplus value from the workers. He does not mind that the capitalist exploits the workers and does not say how the latter can free themselves from exploitation. He completely ignores the fact that the value of the commodity is created by the labor power of the workers in the workplace. It is the capitalist mode of distribution which he considers evil, and he asserts that the workers have the right to consume all that they produce and must be and compensated accordingly. He wishes that the capitalist does not extract anything, and the enterprise always remains where it begins with. Uh, the capitalist standing with the capitalist uh, standing by to watch the means of production depreciate and become exhausted. In the socialitarian system, there are no savings to be made for simple or expanded reproduction and for other requirements to maintain uh, the enterprise. During um, Bill's a pure fantasy world, uh, Engels points out accumulation is completely forgotten, even worse as accumulation is a social necessity and the retention of money provides a convenient form of accumulation, the organization of the economic commune directly impels its members to accumulate privately and thereby leads it to its own destruction. Uh, Engels further states, we now find that Herr Düring's socialitarian system is nothing more than the carrying through of this principle in fantasy. In fact, it turned out that Herr Düring has practically nothing to take exception to in the mode of production as such of capitalist society, that he wants to retain the old division of labor in all its essentials, and that she consequently has hardly a word to say in regard to production within his economic commune. Tito, how does Engels explain the value of commodity and the functions of production and the distribution in the economy. According to Engels, the only value known in economics is the value of commodities. What are commodities? Products made in a society of more or less separate private producers, and therefore in the first place private products. These private products, however, become commodities only when they are made, not for consumption by their producers, but for consumption by others, that is, for social consumption. They enter into social consumption through exchange. The private producers are therefore socially interconnected, constitute a society. Their products, although the private products of each individual, are therefore simultaneously, but unintentionally, and so as it were involuntarily, also social products. In what then consists the social character of these private products? Evidently, in two peculiarities. First, that they all satisfy some human want, have a fused value, not only for the producers, but also for others. And secondly, that although they are products of the most varied individual labor, they are at the same time products of human labor as such, of general human labor, insofar as they have a use value uh, also for other persons, they can, generally speaking, enter into exchange. Insofar as general human labor, the simple expenditure of human labor power is incorporated in all of them. They can be compared with each other in exchange, be assumed to be equal or unequal according to the quantity of this labor embodied in each. In two equal products made individually, social conditions being equal, an unequal quantity of individual labor may be contained, but always only an equal quantity of general human labor. An unskilled smith may make five horseshoes in the time a skillful smith makes ten, but society does not form value from the, accident, from the accidental lack of skill or an individual of an individual 
It recognizes as general human labor, only labor of a normal average degree of skill at the particular time. In exchange, therefore, one of the five horseshoes made by the first smith has no more value than one of the ten made by the other in an equal time. Individual labor contains general human labor only so far as it is socially necessary. Therefore, when I say that a commodity is a particular value, I say, first, that it is a socially useful product, two, that it has been pro produced by a private individual for a private account, three, that although a product of individual labor, it is nevertheless at the same time, and as it were unconsciously and involuntarily, also a product of social labor, and be it noted of a definite quantity of this labor a certain in a social way, through exchange. For I express this quantity not in labor itself, in so and so many labor hours, but in another commodity. Money is already contained in embryo in the concept of value. It is value only in developed form. But since the value of commodities as opposed to the commodities themselves assumes independent existence in money, a new factor appears in the society which produces and exchanges commodities, a factor with new social functions and effects. We need only state this point at the moment without going more closely into it. The concept of value is the most general and therefore the most comprehensive expression of the economic conditions of commodity production. Consequently, this concept contains the germ not only of money, but also of all the more developed forms of production and exchange of commodities. The fact that value is the expression of the social labor contained in the privately produced products itself creates the possibility of a difference arising between the social labor and the private labor contained in the same products. Once the commodity producing society has further developed the value form, which is inherent in commodities as such, to the money form, various germs still hidden in value break through to the light of day. The first and most essential effect is the generalization of the commodity form. Money forces the commodity form even on the objects which have hitherto been produced directly for self-consumption. It drags them into exchange. I see, Tito. Um, what is the material base of uh, basis of socialism, and how does socialism arise from the contradictions within the capitalism? Engels uh, teaches us that socialism is not an ideal, but is based on the actual contradictions of capitalism. The new forces of production have already outgrown the bourgeois form of using them, and this conflict between the productive forces and the mode of production is not a conflict which has arisen in men's heads, as for example the conflict between original <clears throat> sin and divine justice. But it exists in the facts, objectively, outside of us, independently of the will or purpose even of the men who brought it about. Modern socialism is nothing but a reflex in the thought of this actual conflict, its ideal reflection in the minds first of the class, which is directly suffering under it, the working class. As exploiting class, the capitalist uh, uh, extract surplus value from the working class. On the path of advance, working people who own their means of production are swept away. Engels explains, as soon as the means of production had become social and were concentrated in the hands of the capitalist, this situation changed. Both the means of production and the products of the small individual producer lost more and more of their value. There was nothing left for, for him to do but to go to the capitalist and work for wages. Wage labor, he thought of, an exception and subsidiary, became the rule and the basic form of all production, a third though an ex auxiliary occupation. It now became the laborer's exclusive activity. The occasional wage worker became the wage worker for life. The laws of commodity production dominate society. 
competition also reigns in the marketplace, mm -hmm. and competition and anarchic uh, uh, and competition and plan and anarchic beyond any individual's control. Engels explains these laws enforce themselves on the individual producers as compulsory laws of competition. At first, therefore, they are unknown even to these producers and have to be discovered by them gradually, only through long experience. They assert themselves apart from the producers and against the producers as the natural laws of their form of production working blindly. The product dominates the producers. The laws of the market compel each capitalist to constantly revolutionize the means of production, turning the infinite perfectibility of the machine and large-scale industry into a compulsory commandment for each individual industrial capitalist to make his machinery more and more perfect under penalty of ruin. These improvements in machinery, the most powerful instrument for shortening labor time, which under different conditions would be a means to free the mass of people from long hours of toil under capitalism become the most unfailing means for placing every moment of the laborer's time and that of his family at the disposal of the capitalist. Engels points out that the resulting explosion of human productivity lays the real material foundation for a planned society based on the free development of all human beings. Instead of working more, increased productivity can mean that we all work less, he states. Today, this is no longer a fantasy, no longer a pious wish. The present development of uh, uh, the productive forces is already adequate as the basis on which the increase in production which must follow from the socialization of the productive forces, the abolition of the barriers and disturbing factors and of the waste of products and the means of production can reduce the time required for labor with every individual taking a share to what on our present conceptions would be a small amount. Capitalist economic expansion enslaves workers to the machine and creates unplanned disruptions. The capitalist system goes periodically into crisis as the wage conditions depress the market and the profit rate tends to fall, as the expansion of the market cannot keep pace with the expansion of production. By degrees, the pace quickens, it becomes a trot, the industrial trot passes into a gallop, and the gallop in turn passes into the mad onrush of a complete industrial commercial credit and speculative steeplechase, only to land again in the end after the most breakneck jump in, in the ditch of a crash. Thus, the idea for solving these crises through socialist transformation comes from capitalism's own tendency to socialize production. Engels points out, both the period of industrial boom with its unlimited credit inflation and the crisis itself through the collapse of great capitalist establishments urge forward uh, to launch that form of the socialization of huge masses of means of production, which we find in the various joint stock com companies. The capitalist system socializes the character of production and also creates and enlarges the modern industrial proletariat which has the motive and opportunity to revolutionize society through their collective action. Engels declares, by more and more, by more and more transforming the great majority of the population into proletarians, the capitalist mode of production brings into being the force which under penalty of its own destruction is compelled to carry out this revolution. The proletariat seizes the state power and transforms the means of production in the first instance into state property. Tito, does the state ownership of industry necessarily mean the emergence of socialism or what more ought to be done to arrive at socialism? Of course, the capitalist class can use the capitalist state to shore up the crisis. 
uh, stricken capitalist economy with financial bailouts and stimulus packages and even go as far as to acquire ownership of failing enterprises. Engels points out that state ownership of industry in and of itself uh, did not constitute socialism. The modern state, whatever its form, is an essentially capitalist machine. It is the state of the capitalist, the ideal collective body of all capitalists. The more productive forces it takes over, the more it becomes the real collective body of all the capitalists. The more citizens it exploits, the workers remain wage earners, proletarians. The capitalist relationship is not abolished. It is rather pushed to an extreme. Engels teaches us that even though states always present themselves as representatives of the whole society, in truth, every state has a class character. The state actually arose for the forcible holding down of the exploited classes in the conditions of oppression and determined by the existing mode of production. And he uh, put forward the prognosis that after the working class revolution establishes and develops socialism, the road is paved for the withering of the state and the absence of any class to be held in subjection. The interference of the state power in social relations becomes superfluous in one sphere after another and then ceases of itself. The government or of persons is replaced by the administration of things and the direction of the process of production. The state is not abolished, it withers away. Yeah, that's really well said, Tito. But how do you think Engels differentiate the Marxist worldview from the viewpoints of During? Engels refutes During's idealist thinking and a priori propositions which are detached from history and reality. Engels lays out the Marxist worldview, historical materialism. In doing so, he uses a dialectical and materialist method to explain the development of their ideas and those of the socialist movement generally. Unlike During, who arrogantly looks down on all other thinkers, Marx and Engels acknowledge their debt to their predecessors. Hegel appreciate Hegel, uh, Engels appreciate uh, Hegel in the following words. The whole natural, historical, and spiritual world was presented as a process, that is, as in constant motion, change, transformation, and development, and the attempt was made to show that the internal interconnections in this motion and development. From this standpoint, the history of mankind no longer appear as a confused whirl of senseless deeds of violence, but as the process of development of humanity itself while appreciating the dialectical kernel of Hegel's thought as a great step forward. Engels points out the idealist character of Hegel's philosophy. The realization of the incorrectness of previous German idealism led necessarily to materialism, but it must be noted not to the simple metaphysical and exclusively mechanical materialism of the 18th century. Instead, modern Materialism sees history as the process of the evolution of humanity and its own problem as the discovery of the laws of this process. I see, Tito. So, Tito, what are the Durings' ideas on things like, for example, religion, education, and family? And what are Engels' critical comments about this? The constitution of the future Durian state provides in the free society, there can be no religious worship, for every member of it has got beyond the primitive childish superstition that there are beings beyond, behind nature or above it who can be influenced by sacrifices or prayers. A socialitarian system, rightly conceived, has therefore to abolish all the paraphernalia of religious worship and therewith all the, the essential elements of religious worship. Engels comments, religion is being prohibited. Care during, however, cannot wait until religion dies this uh, in uh, its uh, natural death. Uh, he proceeds in more deep-rooted fashion. He out Bismarck's Bismarck. He decrees sharper May laws, not merely against Catholicism, 
but against all religion whatsoever. He's in such a gendarme of the future against religion and thereby helps it to martyrdom and a prolonged lease of life. Whenever we turn, we find specifically Prussian socialism after her during has thus happily destroyed religion, man made to rely solely on himself uh, and nature and mature in the knowledge of his collective powers can intricately enter on all the roads which the course of events and his own being open to him. Let us now consider for a change what course of events the man made to rely on himself uh, can intricately enter on led by her during. Regarding the family during, this prescribes the following. The first course of events whereby man is made to rely on himself is being born. Then for the period of natural minority, there remains, he remains committed to the natural tutor of children, his mother. This period may last as an ancient Roman law until puberty, that is to say, until about the, the 14th year. Only when badly brought up, uh, older boys do not pay proper respect to their mother's authority, uh, will recourse will be had to paternal, to paternal assistance and particularly to the public educational regulations to remedy this. At puberty, the child becomes subject to the natural guardianship of his father. If there is such a one of real and uncontested paternity, Otherwise, the community appoints a guardian. Engels comments critically, just as Herr Düring at an earlier point imagined that the capitalist mode of production could be replaced by the social without transforming the production itself, so now he fancies that the modern bourgeois family can be torn from its whole economic foundations without changing its entire form. To him, this form is so immutable that he even makes ancient Roman law, though in a somewhat ennobled form, govern the family for all time, and he can conceive a family only as a bequeathing, which means a possessing unit. Here the utopia and uh, uh, here the utopians are far in advance of her during. They consider that the uh, socialization of youth, education, and with this, Real freedom and the mutual relations between members of a family would directly follow from the free association of men and the transformation of private domestic work into a public industry. Moreover, Marx has already shown that modern industry, by assigning, as it does, an important part in the socially organized process of production outside the domestic sphere to women, to young persons, and the children of both sexes creates a new economic foundation from a, for a higher form of the family and of the relations between the sexes. During preachers, every dreamer of social reforms naturally has really has ready a pedagogy corresponding to his new social life. Engels comments critically, <clears throat> if we are to judge by this thesis, Herr During is a veritable monster among the dreamers of social reforms, for the school of the future occupies his attention at the very least as much as the author's rights. And this is really saying a great deal. He has his curricula for school and universally already and complete. And uh, but we will confine ourselves but, but also for the transition period. But we will confine ourselves to what will be taught to the young people of both sexes in the final and ultimate socialitarian system. I see, Tito. Um, Tito, how did Engels express concisely the synthesis made by Marx? And what were his two great discoveries for that? Engels declares it was the work of Marx to synthesize German dialectics English economics and French materialism into an analysis of the inner process of capitalism. This was done by the discovery of surplus value. It was shown that the appropriation of unpaid labor is the basic form of the capitalist mode of production. He states further, 
his two great discoveries, the materialist conception of history and the revelation of the secret of capitalist production by means of surplus value, we owe to Marx. With these discoveries, socialism became a science which had in the first place to be developed in all its details and relations. Yeah. And Ito, so uh, before uh, we end the discussion, um, the, the last question would be, have the teaching of Marx and Engels on socialism been proven in history after their deaths in view of the success of modern revisionism, subverting and overthrowing the proletariat? What is the socialist's future? Uh, the teachings of Marx and Engels have been proven in history, mainly with the socialist revolutions in the Soviet Union and China. This came about as a result of the economic crisis and wars in the era of modern imperialism and the proletarian socialist revolution. They proved that socialism could arise from conditions of capitalist oppression and exploitation, and that it could be established and developed as state and society ruled by the working class. Although the Soviet and Chinese socialist societies have been subverted by modern revisionism, the addition of China and Russia as two major imperialist powers to the world capitalist system is now rapidly intensifying inter-imperialist contradictions and is generating the conditions for the rise of anti-imperialist and democratic struggles throughout the world and the resurgence of the world uh, proletarian socialist revolution. That's really well said, Tito. Thank you so much uh, for discussing that, ano, Tito. Um, but uh, I think we will now go to a quick break, Tito, while we are uh, opening our floors to our audience for questions. Ano. Uh, so to our audience, if you have questions in mind uh, along the discussion, just drop it down on our comment box on the comment section of the live video so Tito Jo could answer it. Ano. So while we are waiting for your questions, we are going to a quick break while we remember um, what happened uh, during the typhoon in the Philippines and the victims of uh, the tragedies and the natural calamities. Uh, so we will be back um, and the line will be back. Thank you. Ano nga ba ang dahilan ng malaking pagbaha sa Luzon matapos ang Ulysses at sunod-sunod na bagyo? Dams ba? Quarrying? Lagging? Climate change? Pero hindi daw sana ganun kalala kung wala ang biggest reason of them all, ang kapabayaan ng pamahalaan. Halimbawa na lang yung nangyaring pagbaha sa Cagayan Valley. May iwasan ang malalang pinsala kung may malinaw na coordination ang ahensya ng gobyerno sa pagpapalabas ng tubig sa mga dam. Pero kaya nga nag-trending na naman ang hashtag nasaan ang Pangulo, ba? Diba? Naniningil na ngayon pati ang mga estudyante sa kapabayaan ito. Ayan tuloy, mamamayan na naman ang nasangkalan. Hey, ma'am, gana dyan, tibugding ma'am, sa TIBT, makumpo man nila ito ma'am. Gana dyan, tibagkita dyan, tibagkabatuan ma'am, po ma'am nila ito ito ito. Alpat nga ko ah, kape. Gana dyan, baban ma'am. Po ma'am, ako ma'am, nagbali mga bato tirabaw na. Tekto na yung dam ma'am, gulti nga ayosin ma'am. Mga natig sa tiayosin, mga kasuti. Ilang araw nang naguhukay at naglilinis ang mga tao sa mga apektadong probinsya, pero puno pa rin ng putik ang mga komunidad nila. So sad to say na ito pong uh, bagyong Ulysses na nagbigay ng flash floods po dito sa Cagayan, ang may pinakamataas na tubig na aming naranasan. Kaya makikita po ninyo sa aking likuran, Ito po yung mga books na naabot po ng tubig Ulysses. Dos sila po ay talagang naitaas na namin dahil nung nagsimula pa si Rolly, sumuna si Shoni, hindi na po kami nagbaba. We've had worse typhoons. Pero bakit ang laki ng pinsala ng Typhoon Ulysses? Ayon sa maraming eksperto, sunod-sunod ang bagyong dumaan bago ang Ulysses kaya ganun na lang ang pinsala nito. Pero naging malaking disaster ang bagyo dahil sa man-made factors gaya ng quarrying, logging, mining, at sa pagbukas sa mga dam. Kahit ang mismong DNR aminado rito. Paano nga ba mababawas ng man-made error este factor? It was not nature that uh, made these problems. It was, these problems are basically man-made. These problems are basically because of a failure in leadership of uh, current officials. There might have been some lapses by uh, the new administration in uh, preparing adequately and uh, in following their own protocol. Kasi 
alam nyo, pagka ho, finalo po nila yung on protocol nila, you would see there that uh, it should be two to three days from landfall, no? Naglalabas na po ng tubig yung magat. Given uh, the reports on magat dam, and given the reports on uh, the manner by which uh, Marikina and uh, other areas had in fact been inundated by mud and water. Talagang meron pong uh, criminal incompetence dito. May criminal negligence po. Yung, pang, yung pong mga official ng gobyerno. Sa pinsalang dulot ng mga dam, nabuhay ulit ang mga pangambang ganito rin ang kahihinatnan ng iba pang mga probinsya. Marami kasing dambuhalang dam project ang nakapila sa Build, Build, Build program ng Duterte administration. Kabilang na ang Kaliwa Dam, Balog-Balog Dam sa Tarlac at Halaur Dam sa Iloilo. Ayaw naman ho natin na sa dulo na lang po tayo magsisihan at uh, magsisingilan kayo nga nasira na po yung mga komunidad, may mga namatay na po tayo mga kababayan. Kailangan pa rin ng tulong ng ating mga kababayan. Maaring magbigay ng donasyon sa mga relief groups na may kita ninyo sa inyong screen.
Hello, welcome back to the National Democratic Online School again. We are currently on the discussion of the third episode of the Engel series, anti during Philosophy on Socialism. We are now currently on our question and answer portions. We have opened our floors a while ago in, um, in with uh, your questions, if you do have in mind. I think we already have a couple in our live videos. So, um, Tito, um, are we ready po for answering uh, audience questions? Tito? Ayan. Uh, I think nakamute pa si Tito. So, Tito, anyway, I'll be asking the question. Ay, teka. Okay. Ayan. Teka. Teka lang. O, oh, oh, sige. Ayan. Ayan. So, Tito, um, I'll be answering. The first question that was shown in the audience was, how long does the withering of the state take? And what are the preconditions to ensure that the state will wither away? I think the answer of... Um... Uh, of Engels uh, uh, carries some scientific prudence. Uh, you know, he cannot uh, uh, say when the, um, uh, the state uh, will be uh, dissolved, but he, uh, he puts forward the general idea that uh, if there is no more exploiting class, then the state will just wither away. Uh, as to when, uh, that state will itself uh, um, wither away. It's not uh, very clear. But we can easily impute that the state becomes a public organ with no need for its coercive use. No? It ceases to be coercive because the people are free. There is no uh, exploiting class. Um, so uh, it withers away. But uh, because of the emergence of the socialist countries and their uh, uh, subversion by modern revisionism, we get more, more definite ideas. Uh, for instance, uh, uh, while um, uh, the world still uh, uh, has capitalist countries and while there are in still imperialist powers, uh, no socialist state will just wither away. Yeah. It will uh, have to maintain its defenses. And with the subversion, uh, possible subversion of the social state by uh, the remnants of the old bourgeoisie or by new sprouts of the bourgeoisie. You see, there can be new sprouts. Maybe the social state can, can run already for decades and the old um, uh, bourgeois elements would become uh, would uh, would lose uh, effect and influence. Well, but if you look at the Soviet Union, well, there are uh, uh, you know uh, it took some time before it could be said that uh, before Stalin made the mistake of uh, declaring the the end of classes and class struggle. You know that was prematurely declared. But uh, even if let us say he could point to the defeat then. Yeah? the defeat or the loss of power of the exploiting classes, uh, the capitalists and the landlords. But you know, ideas, habits, uh, and customs, which can promote uh, selfishness, self-interest above so, uh, public interest, they, they persist. Let us say you can take away the land of a landlord, but he will tell his children, oh, this big land, big uh, area used to be ours, but yeah. this damned communist took them over for to put distribution to the people. No? So, you know, um, uh, so it, uh, Mao pointed out, it is necessary to have a cultural revolution, not only one, but se a series of cultural revolutions in order to, uh, to combat uh, the um, uh, the old customs, habits that uh, um, and of your re recollections of the ruling class, um, uh, which uh, uh, are imparted to the children and to people around, and uh, so and then there are also the new sprouts of the bourgeoisie, uh, the uh, the cadres and members of the party, in the party, and in the state can be infected by notions like uh, a, a, a certain amount 
of capitalism or uh, certain capitalist methods can be adopted in order to hasten uh, the advancement of uh, socialism. So, or let's say certain transition measures um, uh, like the new economic policy could be extended because uh, they are good for socialism. So that's the Bukharin opportunism. So, and you know, uh, it's also possible for uh, ultra-left elements like Trotsky to propose the impossible uh, uh, in order to, uh, you know, to, uh, uh, this is called like raising the red flag to run it down, no? Uh, you, you overdo, huh? Uh, uh, the left thing to do, you overdo in order that uh, the ultra-left thing that happens, this, uh, 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 fails and uh, that is to the discredit of the left and the, and socialism. So there are these possibilities. Uh, and I would say that, you know, there are two uh, powerful instincts among men, no? whether they are communist or non-communist. No? Let us say under conditions of socialism, uh, there is the um, uh, impulse or the instinct and impulse of uh, selfishness, self-interest, and there is also uh, another contrary um, uh, instinct or impulse that, that is uh, the social, uh, what I call the social uh, impulse, uh, the, uh, you, uh, uh, the spirit of serving others, because you know, uh, everyone knows you cannot, uh, you cannot survive and you cannot uh, progress if you don't have the cooperation of other people. So that means yeah. to say, just as uh, you are concerned about your own self-interest, you're also concerned about working uh, with others and seeing to it that others benefit from the general situation. And the, the two are in conflict, no? So um, within a socialist society, there are, uh, there are potentialities for restoration of capitalism, as has already occurred. And Mao has offered the solution, which is the cultural uh, revolution. Um, then, uh, in order to uh, make uh, dominant uh, the values and morality of, uh, so, of, uh, of uh, society. And it was also stressed in the course of the anti-imperialist struggle, it was stressed that so long as uh, the international bourgeoisie exists and uh, imperialism outside of a socialist country exists, you cannot uh, put down your defenses. In other words, your state must have the army, huh? must have the, the army and the police and others, uh, other instruments of coercion in order to, uh, for the purpose of defense against imperialism. So, um, that gives us clear ideas as to when communism can uh, arise uh, from socialism. Because in the period of uh, uh, socialism, which is transition to communism, uh, the state uh, with its uh, coercive instruments against internal uh, counter-revolutionaries as well as the external threat of imperialism must exist. Uh, so, um, uh, anyway, uh, what is important that we have, uh, we know already the thresholds uh, for the withering away of the state. If there is no more imperialism and there is no more potentiality for uh, uh, the restoration of capitalism, we are well aware of the danger of modern revisionism, then uh, if there is no more exploiting class within a socialist society, that the state will wither away. It will wither away in a very natural and gradual way. Uh, in other words, there's no more point in using coercion. The, the state will be just become a public authority, you know, in a big society. You cannot dispense with some kind of public authority. But this will be a public authority, an organ of political power of the people that uh, uh, has no more... Uh, as no more function and therefore no more instruments for, you know, uh, uh, arresting people uh, uh, for, uh, because of uh, uh, capitalist, uh, because of greed and uh, uh, there will still be cases of, you know, uh, crazies, you know, individuals when they can be easily uh, 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 put in the hospital, you no? Know? That's uh, different from 
from, let's say, malefactors that are motivated by uh, a class interest, exploiting class interest. No more cl exploiting class interest, therefore, no more state eh? uh, in, to, uh, for suppressing uh, any threat from that, uh, uh, from that uh, 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 exploiting class. Uh, be it real or uh, or in the process of uh, becoming real in the form of revisionism. So uh, I think uh, Engels uh, uh, covers the possibilities without being too uh, detailed and too definite uh, uh, because as he says, you can make uh, certain generalizations only in the basis of uh, the uh, material reality. Uh, history will yield the answers. And I have already given you enough uh, thresholds and outposts uh, for the possible withering away. Huh? What are those outposts? Well, no more, no more exploiting class. So what for is the state? But yeah. even if there's no more, uh, there is no more uh, uh, exploiting class, it has been defeated. But there is still the international bourgeoisie and the imperialists trying to, you know, encourage uh, potential uh, capitalists within the, uh, the revisionists who are potential ca capitalists, uh, encouraging them, you know, to restore capitalism. So from the inside and from the outside, you still have uh, you still have those problems. Yeah. So, but it is high, it is conceivable that all those two. Uh, threats to socialism, internal and external, could disappear. Um, you know, uh, the abuse by uh, capitalism of the proletariat and the people has been so much, especially under neoliberalism, that you that you see the possibility that a new wave of proletarian socialist revolution uh, can uh, make bigger achievements than the previous uh, successful socialist revolutions of the 20th century. Yes, I see. Tito, let's go through naman to um, our audience second question. No? So um, as they said, this is the last chapter of anti During. So what happened after the publication of this book? What was the reaction of During on this critic of Engels on his theories? I think During was uh, thoroughly smashed that he could not stand up anymore and make any further uh, <laughs> any reaction. He was totally smashed. Yeah. And um, he, he um, you know, uh, Engels hesitated um, uh, at first to answer during, but uh, he noticed that he impressed quite a number of people within the German Social Democratic Party and even a, 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 a major a communist leader like Lipnek, you know, one of the uh, martyrs in the German Revolution, uh, Karl Lipnek, uh, who, who was martyred with Rosa Luxemburg. You know, he was uh, he was endorsing, he was endorsing and uh, during for a while. So many were impressed, and at the time, during had uh, had uh, had a high reputation uh, aside from impressing some people with his uh, fancy ideas. Um, he had a high reputation as a victim of uh, the academic authorities in Berlin. He was removed from his job, no? And uh, that was one reason why uh, Engels, uh, because of the uh, popular demand for, his, uh, for the reinstatement of Turing in the university, uh, it was a big issue and it was something he also um, uh, defended. But, you know, uh, during at, at that time, uh, the ideas of uh, of uh, Marx and uh, ultimately Engels had to answer, and uh, he saw that it would be uh, damaging to the socialist movement if he did not answer. After that answer, uh, after the anti during uh, during could be remembered only because of anti during, not because of during's uh, uh, um, uh, eternal truths. Eh? which he invented with his head and uh, uh, his uh, fantastic theories. He was even more fantastic than the, the, than the utopian socialist. Um, he attacked, uh, you know, this is the rain, you know. He, what he attacks sometimes he steals 
from those she attacks, you know, and he uh, he uh, he uh, puts forward ideas that are more idealistic and more fantastic. For instance, he stole ideas from uh, uh, Hegel, and then uh, mis uh, even he even misinterprets uh, what he stole, and also stole from Marx. Uh, but he uh, he makes his own spin-off, and uh, that's what he does with regard to the utopian socialist. And he's so uh, he's so much of a braggart that he he, he says that he invented new things like his uh, ideas, and he does not acknowledge uh, his sources. But he even he even attacks his source his sources as uh, uh, big nothings, you know. Yes. Uh, you will see that uh, uh, this is the modesty of the scientist in the Marx and Engels. Um, they um, acknowledge the contributions of their predecessors. They, uh, they can um, adapt acceptable portions of ideas and say so, they say so, but they are also critical. And so they put forward new, uh, really new ideas. In other words, because uh, serious ideas of the past, even if not entirely true, um, if uh, they had, uh, if they had, if they are outstanding enough uh, for reflecting uh, so much of reality in history, you cannot uh, do away with them, especially if you have nothing better eh, to rely on as, as authority. But in your own time, you can use uh, the old writings of other people who did their best. Eh? Who did their best to reflect reality in history? You do. Uh, you you uh, acknowledge what you can get from them, and then uh, you criticize what uh, is wrong. And the way Marx and Engels adopted dialectics from uh, the uh, idealist uh, uh, philosophy of Hegel. So there is no uh, there is no total condemnation of their predecessors like uh, uh, during does no. Yeah, I see. Tito, um, next question naman, no? Um, capitalism argued the effectivity of the trickle-down economy in, for example, providing jobs and expanding industries. In what way socialism can guarantee in providing jobs, alleviating working conditions, and also expanding industries? I, you know, uh, in my, uh, in my um, years of... Uh, uh, education in economics in the university uh, trickle down uh, uh, express this trickle down expression was already um, uh, was already being used in the 1950s and 1960s in connection with the uh, development theory be it uh, a Keynesian or neo Keynesian uh, so uh, the assumption was that uh, the economy could uh, uh, could develop, and of course, uh, with the bourgeois presumption that free enterprise and uh, the owners of capital are the ones creating wealth, eh? yeah. wealth and jobs, um, uh, they should be allowed. Uh, the economic teaching of the uh, is uh, uh, of the of of the of the. Uh, uh, ruling class, the system, and the and the uh, academic institution was that uh, you let eh? you let the capitalists uh, have their way because uh, as they enrich themselves, uh, they you know what they earn will trickle down. Trickling down means uh, maybe they will they will build not just uh, more golf courses so that there would be more caddies. <laughs> <But> <laughs> <laughs> the best assumption is that they will uh, create uh, new factories and new jobs. You know? So that's, uh, that could be the trickle down. Or they can use, or their, their state can use the tax money, uh, which comes mainly from the, I mean to say, uh, uh, part of which comes from the capitalist class to provide social services and so on. No? But the problem with, uh, you know, using analogies between two different things is dangerous, no? Um, now, uh, Reagan, in the time of neoliberalism, would say, um, he would use the expression trickle down, no? At the same time, he would just, he would use this analogy of uh, the level of the water rising and uh, the big boats will also rise, will float well, 
and the smaller boats would also rise up. No, uh, yeah. uh, that's a very. Uh, I think I, I think it's a stupid uh, w uh, kind of analogy uh, between uh, two different things between the uh, between the economy and you know uh, the boats because you know uh, you know very well the danger of using analogies. When the level of the water rises, when you have floods, it's the poor who gets drowned, no? Whose homes are submerged, and the and the wealthy are safe because they live in high places, no? Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> anyway, under neoliberalism, this expression trickle down is even more ridiculous because uh, here what happens in in uh, under neoliberalism, there is, a, there is an exaggeration of the claim uh, that uh, if the capitalist class accumulates capital uh, rapidly, if all the advantages are given to them to increase their, to accumulate capital and therefore create jobs, then the economy uh, will, right. as a whole will will uh, will rise. Yeah, yeah. But the problem with neoliberalism is that uh, it says that uh, for the capitalist uh, class to accumulate uh, capital faster, you must press down the wages of the workers. You must make tax exemptions from the from from the from the, the capitalist class, and you impose a value-added tax for their. For, for for the workers and other poor people on their consumer goods, and you must reduce uh, uh, social services uh, yeah. so that the people will not become parasites and so on. You know the the workers yeah. and uh, uh, work other working people are made to appear as parasites of uh, the uh, supposedly wealth creating uh, mm -hmm. capitalist class, and then. Um, so there you have the <clears throat> you have the uh, liberalization of uh, investments and trade. Uh, you have uh, uh, financing uh, all going to the uh, uh, to the uh, bourgeoisie, and then uh, in relation to other countries, you uh, denationalize their economies and put them in what they call the globalized economy. Um, neo and the neoliberal policy. So what is the result? In the last four decades, neoliberalism has been imposed. And so uh, what has happened? The inequality has uh, become uh, grosser and grosser. And you know, when you deprive the working people of income, you, um, you put down, you press down their wages. Ultimately, uh, the whole economy would suffer from the old problem, the old recurrent problem of uh, the crisis of overproduction. The capacity of um, uh, the means of production, uh, the means of production are such uh, that you have a um, uh, uh, high level of production. But if, if the people themselves um, cannot buy the products of, of uh, industry, then uh, the economy goes into a uh, crisis of overproduction. So we've had very more than 100 uh, small uh, and big uh, crises. Um, uh, one count is as much as uh, 175 uh, crises of varying scales. But you know, you have you know the big ones, the big uh, crisis of overproduction, or what's called a financial and economic crisis. You have the crisis um, uh, in, um, uh, uh, well, the biggest ones we know from the viewpoint of Asia, 1997 Asian crisis. And then uh, uh, later on, there would be the crisis in 2001 with, yeah. uh, within the U.S. itself. And then this one would become larger by 2007. You have the you have the crisis engulfing the entire world, and then you have the and then this crisis was never solved. This proceeded to become deeper and worse um, uh, up to this time. No, there there was a sharp uh, uh, plunge in uh, the 2000 uh, 
14 and thereabouts. So, uh, and that the trickle down theory is a is some uh, is a, I I call it a stupid kind of analogy or simile or metaphor. Uh, it it has not happened. Uh, the what uh, what the capitalist class has done is to drain uh, the the drain the economy, uh, and uh, in times of uh, in times of drought uh, the um, uh, the people, the working people, suffer eh, from the lack of water. And then, uh, when there is another kind of, uh, uh, you know, after every crisis, the capitalist uh, class uh, make use of uh, uh, bailouts and stimulus packages from the state. So there is a sudden rise of the water, and you get a lot of, uh, um, you get a lot of uh, small enterprises being drowned. No. Uh, what comes is a flood, no? In, in, that, in other words, the, uh, the rise or fall of the water always uh, means a generalization of uh, victimization, no? Yeah. Um, if, if, you pursue, uh, if we pursue this, uh, the, uh, the analysis of these uh, analogies, uh, the rise or fall of the water level uh, either drowns or... Uh, uh, you deprive the people of water uh, in order to survive. Uh, that's the that's the situation. And uh, you know what is a bad thing uh, called neoliberalism? Uh, uh, a bad thing because it makes people suffer, make uh, make people lose make their in uh, their jobs and get lesser income. Uh, in another sense, it's a good uh, thing because it exposes the worst of capitalism. And it drives people to to revolt. That's why we now have uh, uh, mass struggles all over the world, anti-imperialist and democratic struggles. Even if the communist parties, the parties of the working class, are still weak, they have a good chance now to re-strengthen themselves because of these uh, struggles. And the capitalist class, even before there is a strong uh, communist party. Uh, or in a strong uh, socialist movement, the tendency of these uh, um, imperialist countries and even their puppet, their client uh, states, is to use state terrorism to preempt the rise of uh, the socialist movement. And uh, this makes uh, the situation more harsh, but uh, this kind of situation drives people even more to, uh, to, to revolt. Uh, you have now, you know, these, uh, you have now um, movements against neoliberalism, against uh, uh, fascist currents, against uh, xenophobia, racism, yeah. uh, and gender discrimination, and so on. And also, of course, people come to realize that the imperialist powers never cease to engage in uh, building the instruments of uh, of coercion, class coercion and war, and they continue to wage uh, wars. The U.S. is most notorious in waging endless wars. And at the same time, monopoly capitalism uh, makes, uh, plunders nature, so much so that nature is now, uh, even nature now is rising up to, to rebel. Uh, uh, but at the same time, the pro what is pro problematic is that while it is monopoly capitalism that has uh, benefited from the plunder of nature, uh, the people are also victimized by what you get now. Huh? Uh, the rise of the seas, level of the sea, and the uh, melting of the icebergs, uh, the forest fires, the super typhoons, and uh, the floods and the drought. No? Um, and, of course, don't forget that uh, 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 pandemics have uh, arisen from, uh, uh, the, from the attack on nature by monopoly capitalism. Uh, there is also, it's, uh, it's also plausible that um, COVID-19 came from uh, the, the disruption of microorganisms in, in the forest. Yeah. So then that's the, uh, those are the consequences of uh, capitalism that has gone crazy uh, under the pretext of uh, 
bringing about trickle downs and uh, uh, raising the level of the water. Yeah, I see, Tito. Um, anyway, Tito, before we proceed to the um, fourth question from the audience, and we would just like to plug in um, the uh, foreign language press in which uh, you could find um, more of the revolutionary books being published online. So um, you can find it at flpress.store.nv. There's a lot of selection from uh, Mao, from um, Engels as well, Marx, Lenin, and all revolutionaries across the world translated into different languages. So it's better to check them out at flpress.store.nv. Uh, mm. Is it? Is it the right address? Sorry, um, I'm just gonna. May tanong ba? May, wala pa, wala pa. Mm -hmm. Nag-plug in lang siya. Mm -hmm. So I think it goes, um, yeah, flpress.store.nv. Uh, .store .nv. So basically, you could just go there and you know, grab some books, order some. Okay. Tito, to proceed, ano, we will now proceed to the fourth question. No? So, uh, according to, uh, from our audience, different kind of socialism will emerge in different countries and not everything will be the same as Marx and Engels had laid out. How should different socialist countries relate with each other? For example, today we have North Korea, Korea which is different from what Marx and Engels envisioned, in etc. Well, from the uh, let me first point out that uh, from the socialist countries, the big ones that arose uh, in the 20th century and have disappeared because of modern revisionism, um, you have what you might call uh, uh, vestiges, extensions of those big countries. You know, for instance. Uh, uh, Cuba, for a while, well, uh, Korea, for instance, uh, is part of the um, uh, big wave of uh, national liberation and socialism in Asia. Uh, it, uh, it arose soon after the Chinese Revolution, so that is one kind of vestige. And of course, in the 1950s, Cuba arose, and it would look like the Cuba was very promising in, the, in that it showed that without uh, having a world war among the imperialist powers, it was possible for a country to arise uh, as a socialist country. But that, but Cuba as a socialist country uh, uh, was able to get the support of the Soviet Union. So, and then of course uh, Vietnam uh, would win uh, without a world war. But uh, it had to wage uh, a war of national liberation in an unprecedented way against an unprecedented imperialist power like the U.S. So there are these, uh, what you might call, uh, shall we say, uh, remains of the old socialist wave. But so, um, uh, the way to relate with this is, you know, to respect, uh, I think the revolutionary forces in the Philippines should respect these uh, uh, these, these, uh, what you call uh, uh, remains of uh, the old, uh, of the previous socialist wave, um, and you respect them because they continue to struggle against imperialism and because they continue to advocate socialism, and they do have certain characteristics of socialism, even if they don't have any more the big scale of uh, China or the Soviet Union. Uh, they are remaining seeds, you know? And then there's also the possibility that uh, when these, uh, uh, when uh, Chinese and Russian capitalism will go into crisis, because as capitalist countries, they are subject to crisis. Uh, right now, uh, it seems like the uh, China would ride high, would ride high with uh, its partnership with the US, and it benefited in a capitalist way from its uh, partnership with uh, the um, with the U.S. under the auspices of neoliberalism. But now they are now at odds with each other. They are now in serious contradiction. So uh, that is a clear indication of, um, uh, of, of, of uh, how uh, South 
self-damaging capitalism could be. You know, there is a high potential for a restoration, just as there was a restoration of capitalism in socialist countries. There is the possibility of also of restoration of socialism. Uh, I'll explain it this way. Yeah. Uh, compare, compare the socialist revolution of the 20th, 20th century to the French Revolution. You know, the revolution um, uh, was done in 1799, uh, effectively to 1793 in France. Okay, so the bourgeoisie raised the flag, the, the rags of the of the poor, eh? the rags of the peasants, the serfs, and the uh, and and the plebeians, in order to advance. Uh, it's in order it's uh, it's objective of seizing political power, and uh, uh, eventually the monarchy would be finished off, even as uh, as there was a widespread um, uh, overthrowing of the uh, landed nobility. Then the French the terror, so called, would arise, uh, and uh, this was actually a moment when the when the uh, uh, when the peasants and the plebeians rose up, and um, and then there would be there would follow the Thermidorian reaction, and then, then the, that w and then things would be put under control by the corrupt directorate of the bourgeoisie. Huh? So uh, as a result of the suppression of the of the masses, the bourgeoisie solidified, consolidated its power, and then came huh, the. Um, um, uh, coup d'etat of uh, and despotism of Napoleon and his subsequent in in uh, 1799 and consequently the empire building. So you have despotism and empire building. So it looked like all the uh, all the declarations of the French Revolution about the the rights of man concerning equality, fraternity, and so on, uh, they, they, the rule of reason, they, they, they were put away. In fact, uh, uh, subsequently, there would be outright restoration of the monarchy eh? in, in most of the 19, uh, in most of the uh, 19th century. And in France, only, it would only be eh? in the... Um, in the uh, early decades, uh, that uh, you know, right of suffrage and so on uh, uh, would uh, be realized in France. So you know, uh, the ideals of the French Revolution, the rule of reason, uh, were um, would down were put down for a while. In other words, uh, the French Revolution was quite a disappointment eh? but eventually but in the case of this uh, in the case of the socialist revolution of the 20th century well the, the socialist revolution in the uh, in uh, russia lasted eh? yeah. from 1917 to uh, 1956 eh? um, discounting already the rule of khrushchev and then in china 49 to um 1976 or 78, no? Yeah. Uh, so you have longer periods in which socialism uh, stayed in power, and the, uh, it is entirely possible that um, uh, uh, socialism can be restored. It's a potential. Uh, it is a potentiality. Now I would uh, go to. I would like to raise the level of discussion uh, higher. You know. Uh, uh, what pushes history in capitalism, uh, despite the greediness, the greed eh, uh, of the capitalist class, is you know the um, simultaneous advance of science and technology, and the raising of the consciousness and uh, level of organization of the working class and other uh, exploited people. So those two move forward. Well, of course, capitalism so far uh, remains the dominant force in the world. 
especially with the restoration of capitalism in the former big socialist countries. But you know uh, very well that um, uh, uh, changes in the means of production because of the advance of science and technology, they are first appropriated by the exploiting class, okay? So when new instruments of modern production, capitalist production arose, they became capitalist instruments uh, uh, in the advances of the manufacturing uh, in, in Europe, okay? Uh, but uh, uh, the same instruments of production create the, dig the, the uh, uh, what you call the grave diggers of capitalism because uh, the capitalist class cannot produce with these instruments of mass production without uh, 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 proletarianizing the peasants and turning them into workers and putting them into factories. So it, uh, in a manner of speaking, the bourgeoisie it creates its uh, grave diggers, okay? Now you have now, you have now a higher stage of uh, uh, revolution in science and technology. Um, and then uh, thanks to the overconfidence of the capitalist class, you know, you can actually, uh, because of the digital means uh, of production as well as uh, distribution and communications, uh, you have now you can uh, you can use the internet to to uh, to learn what is Marxism. You are now we are now having this webinar. We we wouldn't have the, this kind of uh, 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 event, you know. Uh, say, uh, say uh, uh, some two decades ago, okay? Uh, it's so easy. Uh, you, uh, anything that you would like to know, you can use the, um, uh, you can use the internet, no? Uh, in, so in other words, there are instruments for uh, getting uh, information and getting ideas. Uh, before, if you remember, if uh, I will recall to you, uh, the difficulties of getting Marxist books in the as late as the 1960s. You know, I had to smuggle in books uh, from Indonesia and from Hong Kong to get these Marxist books. Uh, <laughs> but now it's uh, all these materials are in the internet. Uh, before uh, the technology that was that was uh, uh, made commercial or commodified uh, was. Uh, uh, strictly for the military or the security agencies. Uh, much of this technology was already available. And they benefit from, uh, you know, the, uh, the quant from the advancement of science and technology uh, due to quantum mechanics, you know? And, um, the, and this had become uh, products have arisen, no? And there was a debate, no? Uh, you know, capitalism was in need of new commodities. So it was thought during the time of uh, um, Clinton that the information technology that used to be uh, with the military, they could be, it could be commercialized, you know? And the argument was that, and there is the argument, but you know, uh, bad people, robbers would be, would, would be able to hold up banks more easily and uh, they would be able to commit crimes more easily with these new instruments, these handies, eh, which facilitate communication. But uh, if this, let us say, the cell phone uh, is uh, widespread, uh, there will be more people who will report criminals eh, to, to the police, no? So that was the winning argument. The point was to make these new commodities available and to make profits from them. Uh, so the old joke, that um, the old joke that um, uh, uh, you can, if you want to hang the capitalist, uh, they just they would just be happy to buy from you the rope. Huh? Uh, they will they will get be too happy to sell the rope by which to hang them. Huh? You, you get the point. Um, so so long as the capitalists make uh, profits for themselves. They will make things available. Eh? So uh, let us say uh, the UN. This is on a grander scale. No? The US wanted to uh, uh, win over China and use it against the Soviet Union. 
okay? And uh, the, the U.S. thought it was a big winner by being able to convert China into a capitalist country. But, you know, it was practically selling China the rope by which China would be able to, uh, 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 to put a noose eh, on the neck of uh, U.S. capitalism. Now they're, they were friends before, now they're, uh, they're now uh, uh, very, uh, very much at odds with each other. They're now engaged in a bitter inter-imperialist struggle. So that's the situation. Um, and then, uh, uh, you know, Lenin uh, relied only on the train uh, to spread the news, uh, to spread his line, political line, and uh, to spread the Pravda in Russia. Uh, and that took some time uh, for, uh, for his li political line and ideas to spread. No? But now in seconds, eh, if your ideas are correct, um, you have the tool to spread them. Maybe for a while, your ideas can still be uh, drowned by the stronger propaganda of the capitalist class, uh, the reactionary governments, the imperialist and reactionary governments. But um, uh, ideas which hit the mark uh, eventually prevail because when the crisis of capitalism uh, or the crisis of any regime like that of Duterte, he may control the uh, uh, Duterte and the Marcoses uh, may control the troll armies, but when the crisis uh, strikes because of their own uh, criminal uh, acts of plunder and extrajudicial killings and so on, um, then uh, the reality of the crisis would shout louder to um, broadcast and amplify the political line of revolution. And that's the that's how that's how reality uh, amplifies uh, revolutionary propaganda. Uh, you might think that uh, oh, we are small voices still, but our small voices will become very loud when the crisis will damn those responsible for the ex for the exploitative system. And so that's uh, what you are uh, you, you have to um, what minute you, you have. You, you can rely on uh, for the development in the, uh, and of uh, the revolutionary movement on the scale of the Philippines and on the scale uh, of the world. Um, our puny efforts at uh, propagating the truth and the political line uh, will, um, will jibe with the deterioration of the crisis and uh, uh, this uh, uh, big poises of the exploit, exploiting classes and the corporate media will be drowned uh, by uh, the bigger, uh, by, the, by the, the, the resonance of our propaganda and most importantly, yeah, the proletariat and, and the people are ready to rise up. Huh? Uh, so science and technology uh, advances the mode of production especially the means of production. At the same time, uh, the means of communication uh, are made more effective. And um, though these things are under the control of the bourgeoisie at first, eventually they are used by the revolutionary forces and by the people. And with the people organizing, it's the crisis that turns the tide against uh, the imperialism and the uh, local reactionary classes in the Philippines. I see. Tito, um, anyway, before we proceed to our last questions, uh, ay, hindi pa pala, sorry, uh, Tito, next question would be, does the law of value still exist in socialist society? Of course, uh, the law of value uh, has to be applied, but with a, a big change, no? So, um, there will still have to be consider. Uh, there will, uh, uh, commodities will still be exchanged. Um, you know, ideas of abolishing money and so on and so forth, because, you know, it's a tool for exchanging uh, exchanging commodities when no direct exchange of commodities uh, has to be done immediately. Uh, when, um, when people go out to buy things, um, they don't carry uh, 
their own commodities in, to exchange with other. Well, but uh, uh, commodities as carrying exchange value, that is absolutely necessary. Uh, commodities must have use value, that they, they fulfill a human want, no? and they are useful, therefore useful. Uh, and then um, they are exchangeable because they are useful uh, to other uh, uh, people. So you cannot get away. And in the, and in the uh, making of value through the uh, uh, embodiment of uh, uh, labor power, you have a, a social averaging because, you know, there are different types uh, of, uh, of uh, labor power that uh, go into the making of commodities. Um, you, have, uh, you have the more skilled workers and the less skilled ones, but these are generalized in within the commodity. You cannot, uh, you cannot see in that uh, cell uh, what is the contribution of what. And so uh, the wage standards are set and wage differentials occur. So that's a, that is also in, that is in recognition of the different um, kinds of labor power exerted. But anyhow, you have to have a, you have to have the, uh, the value expressed in a, in a single price, which totalizes the value um, uh, for the common man in the market. Uh, that's what the, the price is what he sees. But the, uh, the intrinsic value of the commodity is the labor uh, power uh, that is uh, imparted to it or and embodied uh, by it. So in, um, in socialist society, there are stages of its development. It's easy to divide any, any kind of uh, uh, social formation into initial, middle, and advanced, especially when you are in the initial stage of socialist development, your uh, society, socialist society, carries the birthmark of the old society. You cannot, um, uh, for instance, uh, in the transition period from the old society to the new one in economic terms, uh, you cannot do away with all the, expert, the experts and managers. You, you would lose if you if you lose them, uh, you would rather uh, re-educate them in socialism, these experts, uh, and so on. And then you give them higher, uh, higher pay, some, uh, to in order to discourage them from uh, going out of your country. And uh, and then when there are also to make the uh, uh, revolution succeed, the enemy uh, does a lot of uh, crazy things, destroying things. You know the. Uh, the, the, there are difficulties created because of the reactionary war, the counter-revolutionary war, and so on and so forth. So there are these very concrete uh, things to consider. And you have to consider the level of development uh, of your country, uh, what things you lack, what things you have, and what things you, you lack. Uh, the, uh, the, law of develop, the law of uneven development uh, operates all throughout what you can raise you can go from one higher, from one stage of development to a higher one, and um, um, it is uh, in uh, in the socialist countries that uh, had arisen and survived for decades. Uh, they they did they did not do away with um, uh, with the law of value. There's no way uh, that the, the law of value, but uh, in cons uh, instead of the capitalist class getting the surplus value, the unpaid labor uh, for his own self-enrichment, uh, that surplus value uh, becomes social in character. Uh, the socialist state um, accumulates the fund for expanded reproduction of the system. Uh, this, the, um, um, the industrial capacity the whole economy is increased because a part of the uh, uh, new material values created by the workers goes not, on, not only into raising wages, giving wages and increasing them, but also a certain amount is always appropriated for the expansion of the economy. And then social services are provided, welfare, and there is the welfare fund 
and then you have the fund for administration and administration and then the fund for defense because you have to you have to have your defenses against imperialism and against possible wrong uh, counter revolutionary forces so um, uh, that which uh, went to the capitalist as uh, private profit and to the landlords as rent and to the banks as interest uh, at the expense of the interests of the proletariat and the people now becomes um, um, funds for public purposes, public or social purposes uh, by the state. And um, the accumulation fund is used in a very planned way in order to develop the economy in a comprehensive and well-proportioned way. That's how, um, that's how the uh, 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 new social wealth created by the working class is used. I see, Tito. Uh, proceeding to Tito to our last question, ano? unfortunately to our audiences, we are now closing our floors for incoming questions. Uh, we would like to thank you very much for participating and sending your questions to us. Tito, for last question, do you think uh, this book, Anti-During, should be a requirement to uh, party members to be, to, to, to be studied? Well, it's good if uh, cadres and uh, they... Um, uh, activists would like to raise their level, their, their uh, 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 ideological level uh, uh, to, to rise. They, they would like uh, to improve their, uh, or raise their ideological level to read anti during um, And uh, I think uh, it is easier to read during if, let us say, uh, these things we have produced, you know, these question and answers. Uh, if these are pub printed, publicized, then um, there is a shortcut to anti during before you actually read uh, anti during. Huh? So th there is an advantage. And you have the internet to use you know, um, for distributing the, the pamphlet. And if there are visuals, so much the better. So, uh, but about the book anti during, if you have already some kind of preparation, like what I'm saying, it would be easier to read anti during because uh, many would uh, <clears throat> could any many could be easily bored no? yeah. uh, because uh, Engels makes it a point to quote extensively the silly and fantastic ideas of during huh? uh, <laughs> that's what makes the book uh, um, uh, difficult reading. Uh, it is easy reading when you come when you come to the sections uh, in which Engels positively present no? uh, the ideas, the Marxist ideas about philosophy, historical materialism, about value, surplus value, and so on and so forth. But when he when he uh, uh, let's say because he has to answer uh, during he had to uh, present uh, the ideas of uh, during. So uh, uh, during took a free ride, no, <laughs> in a sense. But uh, that makes the reading uh, uh, boring. Huh? But uh, when you have all these things uh, to read in preparation, you have these videos. I think it uh, it, it becomes uh, easy, more easy to read anti during. Uh, you know, the uh, value of uh, anti during it actually sums up huh? uh, the Marxist philosophy, um, uh, uh, political economy, and socialism, the three elements of Marxism. Um, so it's a very important uh, material. And then, uh, and by the way, if you have no training in science, uh, if <laughs> when uh, when uh, Engels uh, 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 dishes out, uh, let's say uh, when he makes references to scientific advances, uh, advances in the natural sciences, uh, for someone trained in social science, uh, uh, you can uh, be tempted to be uh, to go to sleep. No, but. Uh, uh, 
you know, uh, you can try hard to grasp. Uh, and uh, there are even some people who think that uh, that Engels could only was what himself was limited by uh, the scientific advance that was available. But mind you, uh, Engels uh, uh, and Marx already uh, had. Um, had um, already the, uh, the explanation for uh, for uh, many things uh, for some, for certain things considered as problematic to the most brilliant people. No, um, for instance, uh, Maxwell was responsible was very much responsible for the uh, discovery. Of the of quantum physics, uh, but then he he tried to idealize it. No, he he was more of the he um, he used the quantum theory to overemphasize uh, the wave. Huh? He he uh, uh, he uh, denied uh, the the particles. Um, you know, uh, if you read uh, Marx and Engels, and they say. Um, uh, motion is the mode of existence of matter, eh? then you have there already the reconciliation of the uh, particle, the photon in the light. You know, they, many people idealize the, the light, no? Uh, but uh, in that uh, statement, Motion is the mode of existence of matter. You see, you see, you can you can easily see that the photons have as their as their mode of existence the wave. No, so they're one and the same. You now hear that, and it, it uh, Engels um, demonstrated that uh, when you um, when you um, uh, make the light. Uh, Stripe an object, the uh, the electrons of the target object uh, uh, sort of fly off, and uh, so that means to say that the wave has certain particles, the photons, which disturb the electrons uh, on the target side. So uh, and I think uh, Engels. Uh, uh, did some reading of Marxism, of Marxist uh, philosophy, and it's uh, he has a uh, an awareness of the formulations of Marxism. I see. All right, um, Tito, um, thank you so much, you know, for being with us again and teaching us another episode of ND Line Online, and uh, we are really grateful for parting your knowledge with us as well as to our audience, you no. Know? Who have been um, who have been with us throughout our uh, discussion and sending questions and being interactive within the discussion. Anyway, uh, mga kasama, dyan po nagtatapos ang ating discussion ng anti during philosophy by Frederick Engels um, on socialism. Ano? Uh, next week, abangan po natin ang another discussion here at ND Line Online that will be on the 28th of um, that will be on the 28th. Uh, sorry, 29th of November. So, antabay lang po tayo for updates on our Facebook page, Anak Bayan Europa. Uh, so, and catch, uh, catch updates also on our Facebook group, ND Line Online. Ano? So, wag, kalinyo, wag nyo pong kalimutan na i-like at i-share and invite more of people that could join here in our uh, relatable and um, wide uh, eye-opening uh, discussion here at the National Democratic Line Online Schools. Serious with Tito Joe. Tito Joe, before we uh, proceed in uh, totally closing our episode, uh, do you do you like to say anything to our audience? Ah, uh, na totoo na ano to na tapos natin ating anti during yes. at uh, uh, maasa ko na may mga bang serye na pwede nating uh, 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 ganapen uh, para sa patuloy na ating uh, pag-aaral. At pinaka-importante, bukod sa pag-aaral, um, may uh, magiging gabay sa atin sa pagkilos ano man natin, ano man natutunan natin ha? sa mga talakayan. Ayan. Maraming salamat at uh, 
umaasa ko sa patuloy na pagsuporta ninyo sa ND uh, uh, Online School at mga inisyatiba ng anak bayan uh, Europa. Thank you so much, Tito. Thank you so much. Maraming salamat po sa pakigibahagi sa, at sa atin. No? Ako po si Kasamang Christ, kasama si Tito Jo, mapagpalayang gabi po para sa ating lahat. Uh, uh. Pagkakaisa, pagsulong Narito ako Para sa pagwawas ko Magdaluyong Narito ako Para ang kalat-kalat na pulo Magiging muon na Para ang kalat-kalat na 